Start with the new scene here, we're gonna add in a kinematic body, then we'll name that player, and then add as a child of that a collision shape, and I'll add a capsule shape for that, and then go into transform rotation degrees 90 on the x-axis. And we're also gonna add in a spatial node. I'll call this cam base, and then as a child of that, we're gonna add in the camera. And on the camera, I'm going to set current to true, and on the transform, I'm going to set the translation of the Z to 5. And then I'm going to go into environment here, new environment, select that ambient light, turn that on to white. And then finally, let's add in the graphics, the 3D model for the character, and just drag that onto the player, and then name that graphics and I'm going to rotate it on the transform Y by 180 and then we're going to add in the oh and then we're going to change this collision shape so if you click these you can change the size here and just navigate around click the middle mouse button and drag and zoom with the scroll wheel and then I can move it up if you hit W you'll go into move mode and you can just adjust the size of this until you get what you want That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to add a script here. First, we're going to be setting all our variables here. So our movement speed is 12 units per second. Jump force is 30. So we jump up with a power of 30. Force, gravity is 0 0.98, which is approximately real life gravity. If one unit is one meter, max fall speed, we fall at a maximum of 30 units per second, horizontal and vertical look sensitivity, so how fast we can turn the camera left and right and up and down. Currently they're at one, which means that it won't change anything. And then camera base, get a reference to, and our animation player. If you go into graphics, right click, editable children, you'll see the animation player there. Then finally a reference to our vertical velocity. Next I'm going to Set so our walk animation is looped. Get our animation player, get the walk animation, and set looping to true. I haven't figured out a way to import that with that already enabled. And then I also have this commented out, setting the mouse mode to captured so it'll be set invisible and you won't be able to move it from the center of the screen. Right now it's commented because it's, it's hard to exit the game um, if that's set. And I'm just debugging right now, so I have it commented typically. Next, we're going to get our input. So get an input event if it's a mouse motion, then get our relative motion up and down on the Y, multiply that by a vertical look sensitivity, and then subtract that from the X axis of our camera base. So that'll make it move up and down, and then clamp that to a maximum of 90 and negative 90 degrees. And then take our own character rotation on the Y axis and subtract from that uh, our horizontal mouse movement times the horizontal look sensitivity. And then let's set up our input. If we go into project settings, input map, move forwards, move backwards, move left, move right, and jump. Move forwards will be W, move backwards will be S, move left will be A, move right will be D, and jump will be space and we're gonna in our physics process happens once every physics frame which is independent of frame rate we're gonna get a 3d vector for our movement vector and if we're pressing down move forwards then subtract one from the z component because negative z is forward by default in Godot I think and then backwards you're gonna add one right and left we do that with the x-axis and then we normalize it so that we don't move faster diagonally then rotate the movement vector along the y-axis by our y rotation. So that way our horizontal movement will face in the same direction that we're looking. And then multiply our movement speed by that and then set the y component to our y velocity and then move along that, call movement slide, and set our floor normal to be up uh, one on the y-axis and then 
that will let us get the grounded. So when you collide with move and slide, it sets different flags like is on floor. So this checks if we're touching the floor based on this floor normal defined. So if we're on the ground, that'll be set. And then subtract gravity from our vertical velocity. If we just jumped, then if we press jump key and we're on the ground set, just jump to true, which is this variable we define right here for using in the animations. And then if we're on the ground and we're moving down, then set it to this small amount here so we don't build up a ton of acceleration just standing there. And if we walk over an edge, we'll just shoot straight down. But also you need to have a little bit downward force so that this will collide with the ground and set this flag properly. And then if our y velocity is less than the negative of the max fall speed, then set it to the negative max fall speed. And then we're going to make this quick little function here, play anim, pass in the name of the animation. If our current animation is, is that animation, don't do anything. Otherwise, play that animation. And then we can use that to, if we just jumped, then play the jump animation. And otherwise, if we haven't and we're on the ground and our horizontal movement is zero, then play the idle animation. Otherwise, play the walk animation and save that create a new scene, spatial node, call it world, add in a directional light, and if I hit E, middle mouse button to drag to look around, by the way, I forgot if I mentioned that, scroll wheel, zoom in and out, and I hit E to get this rotation thing here, and then I can just maybe turn that a little like that, and then instance the player, and then create a mesh instance, set the mesh to cube, then go up to here to mesh, create convex static body, and I might go to material and new spatial material, albedo, set the color to like red, like that, so you can distinguish the character, and then I'm just gonna move it down, and press R to scale, scale it out like this, then Control D to duplicate, and then again W to move stuff, and you can just duplicate and move out and create some platforms. And then I'll just save this scene as world and F5 to play, select world as the main scene. And then here you go.